first thing, uh, Cheryl posted the documents for our committee on the website, on the Lathrop Village website. So just want to let everybody know that, that they're available. If you go to www.lathropvillage.org, um, and I can send out like how to get there. Or I think you hit the government tab at, uh, on top, then you hit boards and commissions and committees, then mm -hmm. hit marijuana study group, and that'll get you to that link that has all, you know, all of our documents that we've posted related to, you know, our work on the committee. So thanks, Cheryl, for posting that. Um, it's available for everybody to see, so you can go in there and look at what we've kind of kind of come up with and the supporting documentation and those kind of things. Um, so that's there. Um, so that's just want to let everyone know that. And secondly. The next item is we just want to summarize kind of what we did, uh, what came out of the, our, our recommendation of the city council. So as you all know, we voted last time to recommend that to the city council that the city allow uh, marijuana related businesses into the city. So we presented that recommendation to the city council at their study group session um, a couple of weeks ago. So the council came back and they asked us to before accepting the recommendation, they, they had a lot of questions. We talked it through quite a bit and they, they kind of came back to us and said, uh, look at three things. One, take a, can we look at the impact of legalization of marijuana in other states, you know, besides Michigan, where it's been legal for a while, such as Colorado. So they asked us to do that. Two, they wanted, they asked us, you know, are there any cities closer in size and makeup to Lathrop Village? Can we find a city like that and do a comparison uh, to what what their what that type of city has seen from marijuana businesses, and, and so we can kind of have a uh, maybe a closer comparison to Lathrop. And then three, they they asked us, you know, should we consider taking a poll of the residents? They didn't say to do it, but they said think about that again. So that's kind of what came out of it. They had questions. They wanted us to follow up on a few things. Um, you know, so we did that. Um, the results, so when, so they asked us that. So then committee, uh, the Ian and, and, and I did some research um, and it, it's posted in the documents uh, that we posted to the city site. And basically what we found, what I found for the first item was where they asked us to take a look at legalization in different um, in different states, we did look at that and we put together a summary. Um, I'm going to forward thing to Cheryl. Cheryl, could, are you able to post things and share your screen? I don't see that as an option for me right now. Okay. Uh, Ian, send it you, to me. Send it to Ian me. Ian may Let's be the only one can. who can. Yeah. Okay. Let me see if I can. Just man. Okay, hold on a second. So I wanted to show you this um, the summary so you can see it. So let me send that to you right now. Ian. Okay. I show this thing. Okay. So I just sent it to you. So when you get it, if you could pull up the a document that says uh, 10 summary of MJ studies. Okay. Just let me know when you got it. You got it shared. Okay. Okay. Uh, yep. Got it. Okay. Summary of MJ studies. Let me just open it up here. Okay. Oh, All right. I'm going to share. Hold on. Okay. Let me know when you see it, okay? Sure, can you see it? Can anyone else see it? 
Can anyone see what I just shared? Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, okay. It's up there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good. So what this is, we looked at um, other states. The first one, we looked at, uh, there's a report issued by Michigan, state of Michigan, um, of the impact of recreational cannabis legalization in Michigan, a baseline report published in May of 2020. So that, I, I think this was published to kind of share the status of what we know about marijuana in Michigan at this time. The cannabis use is in, in Michigan is increasing. Um, there's been a number of, these are the highlights of the points. If you want to see the study, you can see it online where it's posted. Um, uh, you know, Michigan residents are reporting symptoms of cannabis use disorder remain stable since 2002. The number of residents using cannabis for medical purposes has increased. Uh, the percentage of cannabis related auto vehicle fatalities is increasing. Suicide and homicide victims often test positive for cannabis. Emergency hospital visits due to cannabis are increasing. So, kind of a baseline of what's been happening in Michigan related to cannabis use. That's what that study reports. Study is regarding Colorado, published in 2018. Impacts of marijuana legalization. So summaries of that are the number of serious marijuana-related crimes have remained consistent with pre-legalization levels. Organized crime cases have increased since 2008, so that's increased. Marijuana-related impairment citations have remained about the same. The percent of drivers and fatal crashes that tested positive for marijuana decreased from 2016 to 17. Uh, whereas the number of fatalities or driver tested positive increased. The state is not seeing an impact of recreational marijuana use on school dropout rate. And surveys show Colorado is not seeing an increase in youth, youth usage of marijuana. So there may be a couple of mixed things there. Um, the third thing, there's another study done in Colorado and the state of Washington um, where they found that legalization of recreational marijuana has had a minimal effect on major crime in Colorado and Washington. We observe virtually no statistically significant long-term effects of recreational marijuana legalized or retail sales on non-violent or I'm sorry on violent or property crime rates except for a significant decline of burglary rates in Washington. There were some immediate increases in crime at the point of legalization but these did not result in long-term effects. So that's what that study showed. That was in 2019, that study. And then the last item is the baseline study that was done for the state of Massachusetts. Um, they no noted that there's the tools to reliably ascertain levels of marijuana exposure and impairment in the field do not currently exist. Uh, retroactive evaluations of fatal crash data suggest that drivers who died in a fatal crash are much more likely to have had their blood, blood tested for marijuana drivers who survived a crash in which there was at least one fatality. Um, the number of marijuana related calls to the poison center have been increasing over time. So those are the studies we looked at. Um, yeah, you can see those results. We can talk about it if you like. Um, this is what the, the, the city council wanted us to look at. Other cities, they mentioned Colorado. We looked at Colorado, Washington, Massachusetts. Um, my thought is some of these studies conclude that there is really no major increase in crime um, and no no real negative effect. I mean, there's, there's, yeah, some, there is definitely an increase in driving uh, crashes and fatalities, I think, in some places. But again, you know, to me, it's legal. Uh, so, you know, we're going to have that whether we have it in our city or not, I guess, is my thought. But anyways, I want to present this because this is one of the items that the city council wanted to know about. Um, so anyone want to chime in with their thoughts? Um, I would just say I agree with you, Sylvain. I think that, um, yeah, there may be, um, I guess, increase in organized crime in Colorado. Um, and maybe some increase in, in um, fatalities. But I agree with you that the, that's with regard to legalization. That's not with regard to you know, the specific community where 
um, dispensaries were opened or something. It's just statewide, that's gonna be the result. And it's already legal in Michigan. So I, I don't see this having a huge impact on my position anyway. So one of the things that, that I would ask, and I'm sorry, I, I lost the document share. Um, can we make sure that when we're providing that, that research, I think it's really important to know where the research came from um, and to make sure like, is that directly from like an economic website? Is that from like crime statistics? I just always wanna make sure that, that you know, as, as a researcher, where the research comes from is really important to me. Right, right. So, yeah, definitely. You know, and those studies I, I don't are, want to know, just my, my uncle Ian told me that that was really good, you know, <laughs> that that happened, right, Ian? Right, right, exactly. No, I understand completely. Well, the studies have, are posted um, on the website, so we can look at those. I'll look them up real quick to see where they're. No, no, I'm not saying for me, Salim. I don't. Yeah, I don't, yeah, don't understand. I understand. But when you when you present it to council, they may have concern about where the yeah, yeah. came from. Yeah, you're right about that. Yep. Right about that. Any other thoughts? Anyone? No, I mean the information is accurate, and um, yeah, just even the research that we that I did independently, it corroborates that and um, you know and and there's some more information as well so yeah we have like your, your point is right Don and we have the study so we'll make sure the city council knows who did the studies and where they came from um, so this obviously you're right it depends what you know, who that's a big impact on whether it's you know you can think of a study as credible or not you know who, who produced it mm -hmm. um, this one, and I'm looking at this time study that was out on Washington. Um, there's a number of authors on it. I'd have to kind of look at it again to see who really uh, commissioned it or published it. But I mean, this this is kind of what we found, what I found. Um, I'm sure there's other studies out there, but I mean, these were the the major ones that I found. Um, so. That's what one thing we did, and we'll take that back to city council. The other items they asked about. And, and real quick, before we go to the, yeah. to the second item, one of the things you mentioned was about the increase in um, organized crime. Yeah. And I guess that also tends to, to follow anytime you have large businesses with cash, um, because there's, there's money laundering and, and those types of things that, that go with those. So I'm, I'm gonna, again, rely on the fact that it's already legal in the state of Michigan and those businesses are already operating statewide. And so when we're comparing what could happen in Lathrop Village to what happened in Colorado or California, we're looking at what could happen in a small village versus what happens across two states. And so I just wanna make sure that we're looking at Michigan versus Colorado and California and not just Lathrop Village. Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. So the other item they asked about was, are there cities closer in size and makeup to Lathrop Village? Um, I mean, we looked at Wall Lake, which I think is a similar size city. Um, I think what the council is getting at is, you know, Lathrop Village has like one main street and then houses like right behind it. Um, some people on the council thought that was unique to the city in Michigan and, and that you know there's the cities that we may have looked at or that have facilities are not like Lathrop Village. Um, so I couldn't find any you know, other cities. Uh, I think the ones we looked at are cities close to us are in the same area like um, Hazel Park and um, Wall Lake's not that Close, but it's a similar size. Uh, we talked with Ferndale, which is not far. Um, you know, I, I couldn't find a point on this, and but I don't think it's a big deal, honestly. I think I would go back to the city council and say, hey, we looked at various cities in Michigan. We think we have a good represent, representation of the cities. All these cities have uh, areas where there's uh, 
industry and retail and commercial and res then they have residential right nearby. I think they all do. Um, so that's my thought on it is that, you know, I think it's prime we look for it. I don't really see any um, other city that we, that is on point, like uh, that we haven't looked at already. And I don't think we really need to look at any other city at this point. But I'd welcome your thoughts on that, anyone. So I'm, I'm just going to say that I support that. I think that Lathrop Village, you know, held out and not and didn't have a lot of commercial space. And that may give us a little bit different feel than like a Ferndale or a Hazel Park or, or whatever. But the other thing I would say to that is we have commercial space that isn't actually being utilized in the city. And so this is a, a viable option for some of that commercial space. So even though it's, you know, there, there were places that we looked at that were very close to residential neighborhoods in Hazel Park. And, you know, literally, I think right behind the dispensary was a, was a, was a neighborhood, you know, or not the, the, the Grove facility we went to, there was a neighborhood right there yeah, yeah, and, well, on the other side of the alley. And it presented basically zero issue from, from my perspective. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, just the the uh, dividing line really was the alley, and it's almost the same as um, the commercial versus residential in Lathrop. We just have a bigger grass island there that's kind of dividing it. So, yeah, I agree. That, that facility we looked at, that part of Hazel Park, that is similar, and that you have a, you know, a main road, and then right behind, like an alley. Some, maybe some parking and then the residence is right there. So that's not that, that's not that unlike Lathrop Village, that part of it. Um, I have a question. Was, yes. council, was council just asking about similar cities in Michigan or were they asking about out in other states? I think they were asking about similar cities in Michigan. Okay. I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah. I think they were looking more, um, like what you're alluding to, the situation in Hazel Park, the proximity of our commercial corridor to our residential, we are somewhat limited in comparison to other communities that all of our commercial corridor is directly adjacent to uh, residential properties. And I think that's what they were looking for. If there's other communities that are situated similarly, or if uh, they're primarily congregating their uh, businesses and operations in an industrial district or something that's there's some separation from the residents. That, that, that was my take from what council was looking at. So I guess it could be outside of Michigan if there's other places that uh, fit that, that kind of model. Okay. The other thing is I think there were, you know, in, in Ferndale, they were also located very closely, like um, some of the dispensaries, very closely to residential areas as well. So they seem to have, you know, they had their parking and then behind them, with a divider and then it went to residential too. Okay. Although so, Will actually also learned, I, I think at this point, given some of the stuff that Ian shared at the last council meeting when they talked about rats, <laughs> I, I don't know if rats eat marijuana, but I would rather have maybe this than the rats that Ian was talking about. Rats are not good, that's for sure. Yep. Hopefully that's under control now. Yeah, I hope so. It's been addressed. So those are two of the items. The third item, we, they asked us, we put the survey or a poll. We, yeah, I know we all talked about it. And so we, I told them that, no, we decided not to take a poll at this time. They, I think the, the council just said, you know, talk about it again and let us know if you guys think any different. My thought is, um, you know, I, I was flip-flopping back and forth on this, but I think I agree with the thought that, you know what, the residents voted in favor of legalization in 2018 by a pretty big margin, two to one almost, right? And I think, and there was a lot of voting during that year. It was a big turnout year. We had a significant amount of voters. We kind of know the position then of our residents on the legalization of marijuana. I don't think a 
survey or a poll at this point would have enough of a significant response based on other polls that we've done. I don't think we get enough people to to consider a survey or a poll credible at this point, and I'm not in favor of doing one. Um, so that's kind of what my thought is on that. And I know people had similar thoughts last time, but you know, if I, can you guys just confirm or let me know if you think any differently at this point? Well, I think everyone knows my position. I didn't see the value in doing another poll. I mean, we were not only did the residents vote on it, but you know, we did that poll what like 15, 16 months ago, and it was pretty evenly split. I mean, very, very close. And I, I doubt that we would get results that would be significantly different. I, I don't really see what has changed since then that we would suddenly see a big, you know, increase or decrease in support for dispensaries in the city. So I, I still don't see the value of doing it. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree because um, the, the last poll we did during the election year, we had a, a huge turnout and we did capture a lot of uh, attention with what was on, on the ballot. And those folks, quite a number of them uh, voted two to one. So to capture that kind of turnout again is, is not realistic. And um, we, we really kind of uh, caught lightning in a bottle with that, with the last two elections. So yeah, I would say um, your, your observation is accurate. Any other thoughts? That's all made. Okay, so that's that's what the city council had wanted us to think about more. Uh, those two items. So we so we talked those through. Um, so I think at this point, yeah, I don't think we need to go over our results or our work again. I think we all know that. Uh, we talked through their questions, the city council's questions. Um, they're having a meeting or a, a city council meeting on Monday, so we're going to give them our our updated recommendation. To me, um, I, you know, I would vote the same way in favor of, of recommending to the city that they allow marijuana businesses in the city. Um, can I ask each of the members to give me their vote again? So I say yes to that. Cora? I still say yes. Don Medley? I still say yes. Uh, Charles? I still vote yes. And Don, I shot you there. No. Okay. So as a committee, we voted four to one in favor. So we'll provide that recommendation to the city council on Monday. Um, so the other thing with this, and Scott's on our on the line uh, to help us with this. I think it might be helpful uh, for the council if we recommended, since we're recommending that businesses be allowed in the city maybe recommend the types and number of businesses. Um, we can talk that through a little bit. Um, you know, we have, we're a small city, right? So we have to think about that, but we have different types of licenses. There's uh, the grow license, which I think we're all agreeing is, is probably a no. Um, let me know if you don't think that, but they require bigger facilities, um, more space. I don't think we have that in Lathrop. Um, the second type of facility is a processing facility, and there's testing labs, testing labs, um, the transportation businesses, and then there's uh, the provisioning centers for recreational and medical marijuana. Um, I'll just throw out my initial thoughts, and you guys can add to it or give me your thoughts. But uh, I was thinking, you know, one maybe put out a suggest that we have one license for a, a testing lab, one for a processing facility, um, one for a transport business, and then a two or three for provisioning center, which would be like for adult use, recreational. Um, and then if we had adult use, we'd require them to get a medical, uh, or a, yeah, medical marijuana license as well. Um, so that's kind of my initial thoughts on that. I mean, that's open. I don't, you know, I didn't really think about it too much until recently, 
but if we throw out a suggestion to the city council based on our experience and work on this, it might be helpful to them, at least in with their process of formulating the ordinances and getting the applications put together and et cetera. Anyone have a chance to think about that? <laughs> Yeah, just uh, um, from an advisory perspective, um, I agree with the the number of provisioning centers. So if you're combining that uh, with medical and adult use, um, no more than three, um, at a minimum two, and uh, it will depend on what that ordinance will look like, where we would zone that. So we would have to give careful thought to it. As far as um, transport, you said one, and you also said um, testing would be one as well. Um, mm -hmm. I agree with that number. Uh, we don't necessarily need to have an increase in that. So um, yeah, those, I think those numbers are accurate. So, so I just wanna ask just kind of about that. And I guess just so, so I'm clear, I'm not sure what it would hurt us to have two testing facilities because that's a very private, I mean, like that, that's kind of an enclosed thing, you know, where the, the dispensaries are going to be more visible. And so you're, we're talking about having two or three of those. And it was my understanding too that the recreational combined with the medical was actually where we saw the biggest tax benefit. Mm -hmm. But but what does it hurt us, or what 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 issue does it cause us if we have more than one testing facility, or more than one transport? I get that we're not big enough to have a grow facility, nor do we really have the space. And the, and the only reason I'm saying is there was some discussion a meeting ago or two meetings ago where people were like, you know, we'd like the opportunity to be able to do this because we're a resident or. And, and my, my only thing is if we have one transport license and one processing license, there, there's not a lot of competition there and, there and that we may be missing out on, on some sort of opportunity for the city. That, that's, that's all I'm thinking because those are not really necessarily visible businesses where the dispensaries are. Right. No, that's a, that's a valid observation. Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, you know, if we're if we're um, promoting competition, yeah, that could be an option. I mean, it's not like there's going to be traffic, nor would there be um, uh, product, right? So that's a good observation. Um, I, I think I think it, it's viable. I think that could be viable. Yeah, I agree with that. And actually, I think there's a lack of testing facilities uh, or shortage right now too. So right. More yeah. than one and get more than one in the city, then you know there's a chance that they could both be successful because I don't think there's enough of them right now. Right. Yeah, um, I agree. That was gonna be my comment. I think there's a severe shortage, is my understanding of testing facilities. Yeah. Right. So, They're actually backed up three weeks. So yeah, that makes sense. And those and, are you know those are, like yes, you know, they're not gonna have a lot of traffic and they're very supposed to be high tech, you know, uh, facilities. Uh, they're not going to have, you know, big signage that uh, that stands out to anybody. It should be like any other business, right, in the city. Um, yeah, so I don't have any problem with that. You know, pumping it up to, you know, two for testing facilities and, and two transport businesses. I think that's fine. Yeah. What about processing? I mentioned processing. Does that, I, I wouldn't be opposed to that either. Does that require a bigger, I think it requires somewhat of a bigger space. Um, yeah, that would be my concern. That's, yeah. that's what I was thinking is it probably would require a bigger space. I don't know that Lathrop has the space for yeah. it. Yeah, we don't have that space. Okay. Well, and, and this would be the, the other thing I would say to that is allowing that as a possibility it would still be up to a business who could say we can work within this space if we had that as a potential because i don't i don't know if we know how small of a square foot print they could have in order to have a processing plant but but again opening that up if there was a business that was interested in doing that we could still have that option
Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to having that as an option because that's, um, you know, I, I think some of them are bigger, but other ones are not. Other ones can be in a smaller size space. Um, and and I don't think if we open up the opportunity that we necessarily have to decide for a business whether or not it's viable. They can decide whether or not it's viable. Right. Yeah, just the observation on um, on processing. So in the other cities, I can't recall what that footprint is. And I don't um, recall us asking what size those were. So um, that's... Yeah, that's a good observation. We would have to confirm what's needed there. But you're right. I mean, if, if they're going to, if, if that, whatever that um, strip mall is or whatever uh, size that is, they would have to determine that. Well, and I think the other thing is if we look at it, let's, let's say, for example, that we look at the current Panera building and we're looking at it and we're saying there's only that space where Panera is. That doesn't necessarily mean that a business, like you said, couldn't come in and take Panera and the two next to, do you know what I mean? They, like they could spread their footprint. And that's right. one of the things I was most excited about when we were looking at buildings that really hadn't been utilized in a way and those buildings were being revitalized and used in a way and their footprint was better than what it had been previously. Right, right. But, you know, the, the observation is chances are it probably a provisioning or a um, processing center probably would not be close to City Hall because of the way that's laid out strategically. I'm just thinking realistically here. Um, and, of course, we'd have to really talk about the ordinances and where we should locate these. So, um, and that's why I said we don't know what that size is in the other cities. And I don't recall if there was a requirement or a, or a um, height requirement or anything like that. So it's something to look into. So if we're saying uh, processing is TBD or if it's uh, something we, we need to explore further, we need to at least address it here. So we could uh, finalize that with council. Maybe we could just tell them hey, yeah, that processing is TBD, and we could look into that further. Um, you know, we could provide a recommendation that we allow you know marijuana facilities into the city, and we can say we, we would allow recommend licenses of up to three you know, for provisioning centers, recreational, um, and also require medical with those recreational, and then two licenses for testing facilities, two for transport, transport business facilities, yep. and processing facilities, you know, we would consider that, but need to determine, um, you know, that, that would be, still be to be determined. You know, right. we would, you know, yep. That would subject to more investigation. I think that would be okay, because at least then they could, decide, they could, council could hear that and then, you know, start the process of, uh, putting together ordinances and things like that. And then at that point, they can look into whether a processing facility makes sense or not. Right. right. Can I ask a question, Salim? Yes, yeah. Was there, when you were doing your background and, and checking with other communities, uh, were there any questions asked how they came to the, their conclusion? Uh, using Berkeley, for example, they've opted out of everything uh, with the exception of, of one distribution center. Was there any inquiries as to how they came to those conclusions? What the, what parameters they looked at? For, I mean, obviously that's a bigger community than Lathrop, but um, yeah, I mean, we asked for different cities, um, and they, it's different. You know, it just depended on which one we talked to. Like today, we spoke with uh, Madison Heights, and they, you know, they opted in, and basically, I think based on the size of the city, they just figured out, okay, which, you know, we're going to authorize, um, you know, multiple licenses for each type. So they have like four process, uh, not template, four testing licenses, four transport business licenses. They have, um, I forget how many provisioning centers, Ian, do you? Uh, the, uh, three locations. Yeah, three of those. Um, yeah. So they, so they kind of did it 
I don't know what criteria they used, but I think they, they just said, you know, we're going to apply for these licenses and um, come up with the right number and, and, and see if people uh, apply to the city to operate those types of businesses. Um, the other cities we talked to, I think, I remember what they said. Um, I think it just depended on the size of the city and what they uh, agreed to go ahead with it to allow uh, the businesses in the city. Then they just determine by size you know, how many dispens or how many yeah dispensaries they should have. And it's, it's I think all of them allow different types of uh, uh, facilities. And one of the conversations we had was like with each of the, the cities we talked to, they had started like with three and then they had yeah. grown to five. And then some of them have now approved up to seven. And so I think that's when we were talking about the dispensary starting with three. That that seems to be kind of like the standard of what people started in the area. Yeah. And the most interesting portion of the conversation for me was the only people who showed up or who had any concerns about them adding additional dispensaries in the cities were the owners of the current dispensary. So I thought that that spoke a lot. I mean, the police didn't even have an issue with it. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. And other in some cities started off with a certain number, then they've added on because of yeah and success and, and those right. kind of things. Like Hazel Park. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Celine. Just one observation. So when we we spoke to the mayor of um, of Madison Heights today, um, mm -hmm. he was talking about a um, a a, um, a point system. Um, yeah. But he didn't. He didn't confirm that they use a point system to determine how many um, adult use uh, testing as no. well as transport. Right. He was just talking no. about um, the 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 point system on uh, determining um, the factors on who would actually get finalized with uh, with approval. Yeah, yeah. That's what he was talking about. He was talking about how they made the selection of who would get the licenses to base it on the point system awarded um you know assigning points to the various application questions and things like that that's what you yeah. yeah 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 okay <clears throat> so um so we can do provide that kind of a recommendation. I mean, I'll go with those numbers unless somebody else has a strong thought on anything different. Um, I mean, I'll write, I'll write this numbers, up. Sorry. Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, I, I'm fine with those numbers. Okay. And, and the reality is if council, you know, doesn't feel comfortable with awarding that many, they can obviously make that decision. This is just, you know, a recommendation, so. Yep, this is a non-binding recommendation, so. <laughs> We'll do the best we can. I mean, we've done a lot of research, so I, I think these make sense. Um, but they can, council can decide if that's something they're comfortable with, or you know, they'll take our recommendation and maybe they'll say, well, maybe we'll do a, something different on you know, the number or the type of facility or whatever. But I think for us, it's it's good to at least give them some guidance on what we think would be uh, good in the city. Yeah. Um, hey, Salim, okay. just just one observation. Um, yeah. Let's see here. I had notes. I can't find it here. Um, okay, keep talking. I, I'll find it. Okay. So my last thing was, well, I wanted to see, I wanted to have a time for public comment too. I know we have public on the line um, or watching and participating and, you know, we're always open for their comments too. So, uh, Cheryl, do you have an ability to take public comments? Nope. It looks like Ian would have to do it unless he can make me a co-host. <laughs> okay. Let me, okay. I'll go over to Cheryl. Let's see. Where do I see co-host? Allow, uh, put in waiting room, remove, report, spotlight video, stop video. That's all I have. You. Okay, so it's on you then. 
Okay, I think everyone is in. I mean, there's only 14 people on the line here. So, so if someone has a question, so if you text check to the chat or a question, if anyone has a question or wants to comment, I think if anyone wants to comment, they can like raise their hand or put a question in the chat area. Hi, this is Ashley Parks. Can you hear me okay? Yes. I was just wondering um, with the um, different facilities that you're considering allowing within the, the city, um, would there be any priority given to residents of the city? Yes. Um, we actually, um, we, we spoke to a couple of cities that actually did that. They actually um, uh, asked for some incentive as far as when um, opening uh, the business up prior to doing that and, and interviewing and hiring people, they recommended residents first. And then once they could not fill those positions with residents, then they opened it up to people outside of the city. So um, that is a strong possibility. And I think um, it, it's a viable process. It's a viable way of, of uh, creating incentive within the city for residents. Yeah, in fact, um, so we spoke with some cities that, they, so one way, and we, we got to figure out how we're still, you know, new and in the process, right? But uh, some cities, when taking applications and figuring out who to assign, give licenses to, they assign, a, they use a point system and some of the point system or some of the uh, scoring is related to, are you a resident of the city? Are you a resident of Oakland County? Um, do you operate a business in the city or in the county? And th you know, those kind of questions. Uh, so you can get more points. And I'm not saying we're gonna do it that way, but uh, you know that would be up to the city council, I think, to decide on how to, uh, ultimately select the recipient and it's got to be in a fair way. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be in a, as fair a way as possible, but I think that would be a factor um, whether an applicant is a, a resident of the city or not can be a factor. And we, you know, uh, I think this council would take that into account. Uh, maybe I'll ask Scott, our city attorney to weigh in. Is there any is that allowable even, Scott? I'm thinking it is, right? Or is there any, um, you know, danger that, or uh, negative to that? Well, it's, it's all, that's all gonna be part of the, the ordinance development process and coming up with, with the application criteria, um, the evaluation process. If, if it's gonna be a point system, I'm not sure. Uh, if it's gonna be special land use, um, you know, th those are all things and that's why uh, at the last council study session, my recommendation was not was not to just jump right into this and take the ordinance language from some other community and run with it because Lathrop is going to provide is going to present some unique challenges, um, proximity, you know, the talking about potential number of facilities and um, just you know historically the city has been very uh, reluctant to uh, grant. Um, package liquor license, uh, uh, you know, and just an analysis similar to that, what, what's required. Um, it's a very difficult burden for an applicant to meet um, currently under that standard. So uh, is the city gonna look for something similar to that? Uh, do they want a lot of control? Are they just going to, uh, are they gonna open it up? Are they gonna relax it? So there, there's a lot of different uh, ways we can go with this. Um, and then that's something, like I said, that's why I think it's going to take time. Not only uh, is council going to weigh heavily on this, but I think um, it's also going to be brought before the planning commission. Planning commission will probably hold public hearings and, and get input from the community. So um, it's, it's going to be a process and I think we'll come up with something. Uh, if this is what council wants to do, something that fits the city, uh, fits the city well. Okay. Yep. Hope that answers your question, Ashley. It does. Thank you. I had another question. If no one, if no one yeah. else has a question. Oh, go ahead. And this is just in in full transparency. I'm actually in the process of um, going through licensing, um, and so I was wondering where the um, 
micro business is what I'm was been told where that will fall in with um, the different levels of facilities that you're considering within the city, whether it's dispensary or provisioning or processing or like a retail space. You're asking where it's aware. going to be located? No, no, no. I'm saying how would that fall in line with um, the different and, and I didn't realize there was an attorney here and maybe they might be the best person to answer this question, um, but where it will fall in the levels of what you're considering when you're saying, you know, two or three um, provisioning centers or two or three, um, you know, dispensaries or grow facilities. I'm just wondering where the micro business would fall. And I guess so that, I'm familiar with the micro business yeah, my understanding is that it's fairly new, so maybe there's not enough information on it just yet. So I was just asking uh, if maybe you know. Uh, micro business, so I think uh, micro business, good question. I think we probably have to put in the, the TBD category, like bring it up to council as a business that's there that might need a little more investigation on whether we uh, have one in the city or not. Because I think it's, um, it's growing a certain level of plants, right? That's, you know, it's uh, yeah. up to like 100, I forget the number, but there's a number that you're gonna grow up to the, a certain amount, but not more than that. Um, and the, the micro business can, uh, you know, sell, right? Sell that product. Um, but honestly, we haven't done a ton of, I haven't done a ton of research on that part of it, um, but I know it's there and it actually, the micro business sales also uh, are um, affected by the 10% excise tax. So the cities do get, you know, the state and the cities will get that trickle down of the 10% excise tax on the revenue from the micro business. Um, so I guess the answer to that is we, we will, I think we should bring it up to council as a business that's there um, with maybe a little more investigation on whether it would be a fit for, for Lathrop or not. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, so if there's no other public comment questions, then committee member comments, does anyone else from the committee want to say anything additional? Uh, just, um, you know, we, we took into account all the data that we, we went out and gathered. We, uh, we took a strong review on it. We ended up going out and actually visiting just to see if any of that is accurate. And in addition to that, we spoke to law enforcement within these cities and, um, the information is, uh, based on what they've given us is accurate and based on what we've researched is accurate. So, um, I, I don't see any other open points. Oh, just, just one, and this is for uh, Scott Baker. So uh, uh, your observation uh, a couple of weeks ago is accurate. Obviously we have to get some, the ordinances together. Um, I think Madison Heights did their ordinances before they actually ended up um, opting in. So the question is um, from a council perspective, obviously we have to get ordinances together and then if it's an opt-in or out, um, that vote, when does that vote actually, when would it actually occur? So it, it's really not gonna, I mean, it, what, what I'm looking from council would be a, a vote, um, and it's, it's gonna be give, uh, a vote of direction, I guess for lack of a better term, but uh, when, when council finally adopts uh, the ordinances and all, all the, everything else that's associated with this process, the number of facilities, the types of facilities, uh, the application process, the criteria for determining uh, which, which entity is going to be granted those license. When all of that is in place, then, then council will formally adopt an ordinance that outlines all of that. And that's when officially the city of Lathrop Village will have, if again, if, if 
uh, this is the direction of council, that's when City of Lathrop Village will officially have opted into marijuana businesses. Uh, notice will go to the state and then at that point, council can start and, and planning commission can start fielding the applications that come in uh, and dealing with them in accordance with, with the protocol that, that has been established. So, so while, while uh, this recommendation we presented to council on Monday, uh, I would, and I would encourage council to uh, give some direction sooner rather than later, because uh, as I just previously mentioned, this is going to take some time. Um, there is, uh, the, you know, the, the city planner and I have already been discussing it, um, you know, we're realistically um, probably six to nine months if, if it's moving quickly. Uh, just with all the all the different uh, bodies that are going to have to weigh in on this, so um, it's not something that I think uh, council should put off making a decision on. I think if if it's something they want to go forward with, that they should uh, direct direct us to get started on it right away. Um, I, so. Okay, just just so, sorry, Ian. I just to say so. Us, so our task as a committee is to provide recommendation to the city council. And they should take that recommendation and direct the uh, establishment or the completion of these ordinances and things like that. And at the end of that process, there'll be a vote on opting in, right? That's how, basically, that's how it's going to go. Yeah. Okay. And in the meantime, we'll have a vote. The council will probably vote on extending that sunset period. Um, but we have time to do all this. Yeah, I think, I mean, the discussion that can be had at council is if uh, they're taking your recommendation, this body's recommendation, uh, if they if they feel that it's, uh, if they agree with that recommendation and they want to move it forward, then, then yes, they would direct, uh, my recommendation would be that they direct to extend the sunset to allow the ad adequate time to, to put everything in place before opening up uh, officially for business. If they do not agree with the recommendation, then my recommendation would be to change the sunset and make the opt-out permanent. So it, it really depends on what the, that decision of council will be on Monday. So. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we just talked about the next steps, which was the last thing on the agenda, which was, <laughs> which is good. We'll, we'll provide the recommendation to council on Monday. Um, council will take that under advisement and decide if we want to direct uh, the completion or the creation of ordinances and regulations and things like that. And then uh, I think we move forward from there. So that's all I had today. Anybody else have any comments or questions? Copy. Okay. We're all good then. Uh, let's sign off. I apologize for the technical problems. Thanks Ian for taking over. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, and thanks everybody for their participation and attention. Appreciate it. So, so will we Cheryl, will you send an invite about the council meeting on Monday or? Um, I think the, is it always posted, the council meeting? Is it already posted? Yeah. So it should be posted on the website, I believe. Okay, just the public yeah. meeting, okay. Yeah, the public meeting is a normal city council meeting for okay. July, I believe. So Salim, is the position that the committee will participate or be in attendance? As, as um, we're making the review? Yeah, that's, I mean, I, if you, if we want to be, that's great. Um, I mean, I'll be there and I can speak for the committee, but I don't have to be the only one on the committee that's there. So yeah, uh, I don't think it's required for the committee to be there. Um, I mean, before that, I'll, like I did last time, I'll just put together our language and writing and I'll circulate it to the committee. Yeah. To sign off and we can present that to council. Yeah. Um, but yeah, everyone's welcome to be there and, and voice their opinion um, on the matter. Yeah, okay, all right. So I don't think so they're required. welcome to attend. 
Yeah, you're welcome to attend. I, I'm not going to, I don't think anyone has to be there. Okay. All right. All right. Thank, thank you. you okay. Thanks. All right, Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate okay, it. Night. Thanks, Cheryl, Bye. for letting me control. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> See you later.